I'm in danger of doing it the hard way if I get too hasty. I'm going to try an ice pick. I love my ice pick. I'm going to try really careful not to hurt it. No, nope, not going to work. Here we go. Remember, there's a bevel here. I should be able to lift it with this chisel, this cold chisel. There we go, I'm lifting it. Let's see if I can get a hold of it with this briar tool now. Awesome. Yeah, might have to buff the sides of that just a little bit. Hammer and chisel mechanic, what can I say? Hammer, chisel. Hammer and chisel is actually the proper, a, a good method. This was not so smart. All right. Take the spacer off. Now, I think this will slide out. Slide, huh? Well, let's see if it moves. There might be something else holding it. Definitely something else holding it. Just to investigate this properly, this is marked oil because there's usually a bearing in here. Because when you're using the back gears, this spins on the shaft. This one here is not marked oil. There may be a set screw under this. We'll get my beloved ice pick out. Nope, I don't feel I don't feel anything. Yeah, I can see the shaft moving in there. This is loose. This collar here doesn't seem to have anything holding it. Ah, here we go. Let me put my oil plug back in before it's lost. And right here we have a set screw. This thing is built almost exactly like a Craftsman Atlas lathe, except it's built tougher. It's built out of steel instead of a Mac. I hate to see any of my lathes go. This might have been the best lathe I had to restore, but I sure like that Craftsman Atlas stuff. Just the history behind it is cool. Okay, so that screw is no longer engaged. Let's see if we can. Nope, spindle doesn't want to move. I may have to look online. I don't want to damage anything. Oh, wait a minute. This bearing cap comes off. So here's my big screwdriver. My wrench. Oh. I bet you that spindle assembly will come out of there now. I didn't see any uh, way to oil these bearings, by the way. I think they may be permanently greased. There's an oil path to that. I sure don't know where it is. Hmm. I doubt if it makes a difference, but just in case. Ah, this looks like something loose, some kind of bearing shield. Oh yeah. Hmm. I guess that's what I'm working off. Because this is getting more play in it.
Yep, I can see it coming off. Turn the spindle, there we go, it's cocking it. Take your time, don't be an animal. You can figure things out before you mess them up. Yes, permanently greased bearings. By the way, this washer has a concavity to it, and I'm, I put it back in here exactly how it goes back on. Yeah, that's clean, that's just grease. Make sure there's not more than one set screw. There's not. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to look under this set screw just to make sure there's not another one there. I'm going to feel around with the pick. If there's one in there, I'd be able to fill this, the side hex holes, the sides of the hex hole. Let me put that back so it's not lost. Looks like our shaft. Oh, we're bringing the bearing out with it. There we go. There we go. Now we gotta pay attention here. So we got a spacer back here where my left hand is. Got a spacer back here. Ah, so it won't go any farther because I have the nut on there, so I wasn't driving on the end of the shaft. Let's see, I don't want pieces to fall and break, particularly gears. clean this stuff before it goes back together. But even though I cleaned this in solvent, uh, the grease was still in the bearing, so that's kind of nice. I wonder if that's 47 year old grease. Wow, I wonder if this is the right gear. Looks like the right gear, but it's not clearance board for that bushing. Could have the wrong gear here, I don't know. May end up having to bore this. I hope I don't have to do any machining. That'd be tricky to change that gear. Well this gear is firmly locked to this, which means it's probably pressed in. I guess I'm gonna have to take that bushing out of there. Yeah, I can see. I can see. This is bushing. This is the bore. And then there's another lip that drops down. There's a gap between the end of that gear and this bore. So, how do I get that baby out of there? This is probably going to involve my, my press. I gotta think about how I can do that. Okay, so here's an idea. I'd like to just push out that other side. But, but what I could do is turn up a tool that fits in here and comes over this lip but not out into the metal and push this bearing against the next bearing and push both bearings out in that fashion. Then I can use uh, a similar tool to reinstall them. Although this, the tool that I would reinstall them with, I would want a flange that comes out to here. Um, so I stop the bearing flush. Now that still doesn't necessarily get my other, get my gear out. And remember, I, could, I thought I could see the shaft rotating under here. Let's 
Let's get that out of there. Yep. So the, the bearing is drilled there. That's just to oil that bearing. So I would have to line that hole back up when I press it in. I can see, I don't know if you can see it, but right there is the hole for this screw. And that lets this little cavity have oil in it that keeps the bearings lubricated. Now, if I can't push this gear out, which I'm pretty sure I'll be able to figure out how to do it, but if I can't, I could always machine it out or machine the teeth off of this and drive the stem. The, no, I couldn't drive the stem the rest of the way through. I'd have to machine it out. Well, I'm going to have to think about this. I don't want to do this the hard way. And I'm in danger of doing it the hard way if I get too hasty. We have a plan of action. I have a piece of brass here. And get rid of this annoying snout that's on it. I hate to cut a piece of brass, but it's the perfect size. For some reason, my carriage doesn't want to go to the left any further. So, all right, we'll move the compound. That's perfectly good enough. I want to get rid of this radius here. Or more of the radius. Give it a touch off. Make a cut and take a measurement here. The ID of the part is an inch 250. That looks like a nice cleanup. Boy, oh, brass is beautiful. Alright, let's see where we are. We are at an inch 357. Let's take a 20 foul cut here. Which will actually take 40 off the OD. And another one. So we should be down about 80. So I'm predicting that we'll be at about 2 inches. 2 inches uh, 77? Am I doing my math right? 2 inches 7, 1 inch, I'm sorry, 1 inch 273. I meant 277. Seventy-three. We want to be under two fifty. So I can take another ten off. That should put us at two fifty-three. Another ten per side. What yeah, a beautiful fine finish I can get with my grainy gear setup lathe. If you have a Craftsman or an Atlas lathe, you'll want to look back through and see how I solved the solved the uh, high rate of feed problem for finish cutting. Okay, now we're at one inch to fifty-six. So I'm gonna move it in another five. Now it'll give us about four thousandths clearance, which will be just fine for a uh, tool meant to push the bearing in. We don't want to jam it in the bearing. I'm going to stop the lathe and measure it when we get in there without moving the tool. Let's see if we got. 
Yeah, we got about three and a half thousandths clearance. One inch 246, so that'll be fine. And now we'll take the tool out, because I have a slightly cupped back edge there. And we're good there. Now, let's see, we need this OD. One inch, 385. Okay, I'm measuring just roughly about 1 inch uh, 415 on the OD of these bushings. So this should slip right past the bore without any difficulties. A little lead on that. Take a sharp edge off of that. Really, this snout that I turned down is just aligning this edge, which is going to do all the pushing. Let's see how that fits. You can see a little bit of bearing reveal around the edge. I hope you can see that. So this will go right through there. Now, I need to make a tool to press on this, it's got a little alignment snout for that hole. I have no idea what that hole size is. Looks like it's 750. So I'm going to take this shaft, flatten both ends of it, put a uh, 750 snout on one end of it. Cut this about a half inch. Take ten aside instead of five aside. Oof. See where we are. We're way off. I'm gonna say we're about eight hundred. Ooh. Eight sixty two. This is down to eight twenty two. Another 20 gets us down to 782. Another 10 gets us down to 762. Seven fifty-nine is only off by three. So let's take five. Let's take six on this one. Could get us down to 747, 12 off, roughly. Our cut's starting to look not so good, too. Yep, 747. So it should go in our brass part. We'll bring the tool bit out. Flatten that shoulder. Put a lead in on it. The edges off. Try them. Look at that. Oop, doesn't need to go in that side. A little snuggler than I thought, but hey, perfect. I made a pushing tool. I'm going to flatten this in now. So there we go. 
we made a tool on the crafted channel. Now to reinstall those bushings, I could use this tool, but I might make another tool a little larger OD so I can do that more accurately. Beautiful stuff, huh? This is why you need a lathe, boys and girls. You can make your own custom tools.